Guys. Guys. I've, I've got a confession. I've been, I've been wanting to tell you this for a while. Just, I, I just haven't been able to do it. But I've got to be honest now, you know, um, I haven't stretched. I, I haven't, I haven't trained my flexibility for one year. I know, I know. Please don't click off the video. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What is up my body weight warriors and welcome back to another video. Um, yeah, the title of this video is actually fairly true, but I'm, I'm not sorry for not doing it. It was kind of like a, uh, a personal experiment. It's not that I haven't stretched at all, it's just that I haven't actually trained flexibility with a real focus and intent of improving range of motion like I did beforehand when I was trying to increase my flexibility or like I would do with clients and in programs. Um, it's kind of been more a little bit of grease the groove and the reason for this was kind of a bit of an experiment. I wanted to see how much flexibility I would lose without really training it at all and the results did kind of surprise me. Right, so let me give you a little bit more context in terms of what I actually mean by not training flexibility for an entire year. This kind of started when I achieved the middle splits back around two years ago now. But essentially, I got to the middle split and I've been working really, really hard at flexibility, really consistently for a long period of time, something like four years. And um, that was like the final big goal. I had front split, I had pancake, the final big goal to tick off was middle splits and I did it. And all was good in the world. <laughs> The one thing that had crept up on me when I was training the middle splits was just general aches and pains. I think people have this perception of when you see somebody who is flexible, it means they are not achy or they don't have joint pain, etc. But the truth is, like when you're going for extreme levels of flexibility, there's a certain amount of forcing the body to adapt and get used to that new range of motion. It has to reset that length tension relationship that it has in the body. And for me personally, middle splits was one of those things that I really had to force and train hard to get my body to adapt to and I just had like achy hips basically. So I took a break from training middle splits, I continued to train everything else. Yes, they got a little bit worse, but my hips felt a little bit better and that's, that's, a, that's a sacrifice, that's a middle ground I'm happy to make. Six months later, I was still training my usual flexibility stuff and I'd noticed that my fl flexibility in my middle split hadn't actually decreased that much considering that I hadn't trained it for the last six months. It was still there or thereabouts. And that kind of made me think, what would happen if I didn't train flexibility at all? And that's kind of where this whole thing kind of stemmed out of. I was just intrigued to see what exactly would happen. And the answer is, is basically not much. Admittedly, I have lost a little bit of range of motion and I certainly haven't improved in any, but that's kind of expected because I'm not training it. I'm not expecting any miracles to happen. But you will see from today's session, we're gonna do a lower body strength session as well as a lower body flexibility session because the past three weeks I have been training flexibility again so I'll share that with you but I won't be able to share the exact details as MDog is doing my programs at the moment and that's his intellectual property it's not mine to share. Now I should make a point that I'm not suggesting that you just go out and don't train flexibility at all that would not be a smart move. The reason I've been able to maintain my flexibility without actually training it directly is simply through the principle of use it or lose it. That's kind of what governs flexibility. So I still use my range of motion an awful lot because of the training that I do. So when, for example, I'm doing handstands, I train handstands four or five days a week. During the session, I'll sit in a stretch and that stretch will usually be pancake or middle split and a little bit of pigeon. And then when I'm doing the actual handstands themselves, I often in straddle position, which means that I'm gonna be using that straddle flexibility range of motion as well. So although I'm not directly training it intensely, I still am getting into the position and using the range of motion that I've built up over these years, which is essentially the main reason why I haven't lost all of it completely as of yet. But if you use the right methods and you're consistent and you put the work in, it shouldn't take that much energy to maintain it. Certainly if it's part of your practice or sport or whatever it is that you do. And you know, when you're developing flexibility, that should be the focus in my opinion anyway.
Now, unfortunately and fortunately today, um, my shoulders are completely trashed from the past few days of handstands and upper body sessions, so there'll be no handstands today, which I guess is a downside, but also it means the session is not gonna last three hours like usually. Right, enough nattering, let's get training. So let's jump straight into the commentary of today's video. First of all, I am not trying to claim to be a big weightlifter kind of guy or anything. Uh, you can tell by the size of those pins that cool legs. <laughs> that is not my main thing. Uh, I do lift weights, but more as like a functional, um, just necessary thing that I need to do. I think that everyone should be able to pick heavy stuff off the ground. So generally speaking, there is some deadlift work and just some light leg work in, in most of my programs, but it's just like, bare bones, just enough to keep things ticking over and have some form of conditioning in the legs. So today I was working on podium snatch grip deadlifts. So both of which are basically gonna emphasize more of the bottom portion of the deadlift because one, there's a podium, so there's more distance for the bar to travel. Number two, snatch grip means that the torso has to be closer down as well. So just a little bit more leg drive, a little bit more quad work. Um, I actually haven't deadlifted for a little while in terms of like heavy, so I only ever worked up to I think to 110 kilos in this session for sex of six. So nothing crazy, nothing special, um, but something that I'm still kind of looking to gain a little bit on. Um, then this was just followed up with a little bit of quad specific work and probably my favorite lower body exercise and that is the uh, split squat, specifically with this like forward lean bias. So you'll notice that when I go down, I'm not just going up and down, I'm going down and forward diagonally with a big emphasis, pushing the knee over the toe. That's gonna create like both good strength gains, but also good gains for flexibility in terms of hip extension, opening up the hip flexor, and also for the ankle and the knee flexion of the front leg. So it's like probably one of the best lower body movements. If you're gonna only do a little bit, this one will give you a lot of bang for your buck and there's another reason that I've been able to maintain flexibility of my lower body because of exercises like that. This was paired with these single leg extensions. This is again, just some more lower back work, some hamstring work. Uh, for me, lower back has always been weak and always needs attention. It's something that always lacks for me. So it's always, you know, deadlifts, back extensions, they always have a place. Um, and the single leg was because I have a significantly weaker left leg than right leg on this exercise, like two or three reps difference. If there's one rep difference, not that much of a big deal. Two or three reps is quite a lot, so I'm trying to even that back out. And there's various reasons for that. One of them is probably playing golf uh, for too long, too much. And uh, then finally, onto the actual flexibility work. So, because I haven't done flexibility in a while, um, but the, the the central nervous system is still there in terms of the flexibility, I'm basically work on working on entering the position. So. Um, the biggest issue I've had going back into flexibility training is like the general uh, feeling that I don't want to be in that position, the body's kind of reaction to it. Once I actually stretch a little bit, I can basically get to the same level that I was beforehand without much effort. So I'm just working on getting my body more used to entering a position and entering it quickly. So doing things like these front split scissors and then sort of spending some time in the relaxed position at the end. The, the same thing then applies with the middle splits, the same principle, sliding out, and sliding back in. What I have done here is I've included the first and the second set just so you can see the difference. Like you'll see here, the front, the middle split is actually pretty bad to be honest. But then once you move into the second set, it's significantly lower, like getting close to full middle splits. And again, if I wanted to push this, I didn't choose to push it in the session as so I'm sort of easing my way back into things. Finally, I finished up with a little bit of just relaxed stretching. As I said, I'm just working on getting more comfortable in the positions again. So it's nothing super intense. It's more about entering it, staying in there, breathing. Uh, I will notice, I will mention that front splits, I'm not twisting the hip. If you twist the hip, you make this significantly easier. So you'll see like I twist the hip here and then I go back up. Keeping the hip square will make the front split a lot harder. And finally, of course, uh, the good old fashioned pancake. This is one of those ones I haven't actually lost any flexibility in, in there. And if anything, I've actually gained a little bit simply because I use it so much for a warm up and just in my hands and in general, like doing presses, doing starter press, 
uh, in the straddle position itself. Like I use the middle splits and the pancake a lot, so I don't tend to use range here. But that's basically it for the training session. Back to the vlog. Right, so surprisingly good in that session in terms of flexibility. It's one of those things that for me, I think I sort of probably mentioned in the commentary of all of those training clips is that uh, it now, since I haven't trained it as intensely for a long period of time, it just takes me a little bit more time to get back into that position. It's just essentially brushing off the rust at the moment. In terms of this, this is a post-workout. In here we have um, oats, chocolate whey, a frozen banana, and some nut butter and oat milk. So it's basically just calories that's kind of it uh, this one's just super simple i blend it leave it in the car the frozen banana kind of keeps it cold and defrost by the time i get out and post workout right back home and oh. so flexibility training is going to be back uh, it kind of never really left but it just wasn't there as prevalent in my training there's been a big focus on hand sets and all sorts of other stuff but now there feels like there is that extra recovery capacity to dedicate some time to some hard stretching and see if over splits, over front splits, more active flexibility stuff is actually possible. Certainly feels like it could be. But if you have any questions or if you wanna let me know how your flexibility training is going, what are you doing for flexibility training? Do you stretch a little bit every day? Do you set a couple of intense sessions out a week? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, write it down there, you can hit that thumbs up button if you want to support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But that has been it for this week, guys. Have a strong week and 